welcome back to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. Hey, we've got another giveaway, but before we do this one, we actually have to draw a new winner because the winner of the Kahaya gig bag failed to reach out to me within the three days that I asked him to. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you know if you've won and check your messages or have an email listed on your YouTube account so I can get a hold of you if you win. But this is our next winner. Congratulations. But our next giveaway is also sponsored by Kahaya. So you can check out the Amazon link in the description if you're interested in purchasing one of these or just more curious about what you've got. But this isn't really guitar related. This is just something goofy that I want. So you get a box and you get this in a little mailing sleeve. It's a melodica. Now you're probably wondering what on earth is a melodica? Cause I had never heard of one of these things before either until I saw one. It's essentially a piano that you power by blowing into it. So you get this nice little carrying case. I mean, it's pretty basic. It's got a zipper that functions. So it looks like we just plug it in like this. <laughs> I'm gonna have some fun with this off camera. So if you want to win one of these and have a good time, like the video, subscribe to the channel so you know that you've won, and leave me a comment and tell me what song you would want to play on this. But let's get on to unboxing some guitars. But I do my best, whoa. Can you guys see that? We got a, is that a spider? Yeah, it's just a little spider friend. My rule with bugs is if they don't bother me, I won't bother them. But anyways, within this box, I'm not sure if it's this box or the other box, there's a really, really cool guitar that has a story, but I'll have to wait until I figure out which one it is. But FedEx just dropped both of these off. Okay, this is not that guitar. By the way, that spider is not from my house. He must have been from outside. Generation two chainsaw case. A true gen one doesn't have the back latch here. These are my favorite cases. Looks like somebody rage, some other graffiti, but what is inside of here? Oh, it's that custom. This was kind of funny. This is a 78 custom. It was on reverb and I had somebody message me that day. They were like, Hey, I want a 1978 custom. They're offering me like a bunch of stuff for it. I mean, it wasn't really something I was interested in trading for, but that was kind of the reason why I was like, yeah, okay, I guess I'll get this one. If I work a deal out with that guy or something, great. If not, oh well, it's a 78 custom. They're not hard to sell by any means. This one has some modified parts. I think it's just uh, tuners. Looks like our headstock made it just fine. But the other reason why I wanted this one is the back. It's like extra figured, but this kind of has some of those cool characteristics to it. So that's why I was also like, yeah, that's a good one. Normally, you know, cherry sunburst, not my favorite color. This one's kind of extra clowny. It's almost kind of like a, a reddish bright orange. Looks like inside here we have a, a, a Craigslist listing for $3,695. Low ball offers will not be considered. Well, I could tell you guys, I'm gonna be listing this thing for less than that. And I didn't get this from Craigslist. So I'm not even sure if this is the same guitar. The colors aren't matching up and I don't have that case candy anymore. 73309. So that had Schaller's on it. <laughs> what? Why is this in here? This is not for the same guitar. I don't know, I'm just gonna throw that away. This one right here, guys. It might not look like much, but there's something really special in here. And I kind of stumbled upon it, you know, by dumb luck. It was listed on Reverb. I, th I think it was in the afternoon. So I remember I was eating lunch and I saw it and I was like, yeah, that looks stupid. <laughs> but sometimes it's the weird stuff that'll draw me in, you know, to look at all the rest of the details and things like that. And sometimes you get lucky and you find something special. This smells like moisture. Ugh. 
Or maybe it just smells like dust. Wow, do you guys see this? This, what was it, like in a barn? Maybe it was just the case. Hopefully the guitar itself is, you know, not too bad. <laughs> this guitar kind of has a secret to it. You're also gonna notice, whoa, this is way larger than what I normally buy. So what is in here? Behold. Oh, it's so ugly, but it has a certain charm to it, right? So this is what drew me in. It's a mashup of two different models, and this is called the Chet Atkins Tennessean. And usually these things will have a pick guard on them. And that's the first thing that I noticed on this guy's listing is there wasn't a pick guard. It didn't have the armrest thing. It just looked so plain and ugly, but that's also what helped me see that this is just a mashup of two different models that we'll talk about in the full review and demo. But it's that missing feature, and you can tell they were never there because there's no exposed screws, that drew me into this listing. And as I kept going through the photos, I saw this. A beautifully figured three-piece maple neck. And then this. Original Gibson prototype. Why did they not put that in the title? I would have clicked it so much faster. They had it in their description, but not their title. So half the battle sometimes is just getting the title right. Now, unfortunately, we've got some finish damage here that was not disclosed to me. That looks uh, moisture related to me, not necessarily break or crack related. Not a big deal because this is a prototype of I don't really know much about this model. I'm gonna have to do quite a bit of research. I just think it's cool and it's got a Bigsby. That's not something these came stock with usually. And now I've saved the best one from last. This one comes from us all the way from Japan. And if I'm buying stuff from Japan, you know it's like a cool limited edition or something that's just hard to find. So I tried from a new vendor this time, TC Gaki. I purchased it directly from them because unfortunately it was cheaper to do that instead of going through Reverb or eBay. I forget how I found this one. And that always worries me because I've been burnt really bad doing that in the past. Because if something does go wrong, PayPal just says, sorry, this was an international transaction. We're not going to help you. So this is kind of an interesting pack job. It almost looks like they maybe double boxed it. Got a giant toilet paper roll. <laughs> Ooh, I feel like I could make a sick beat with those things in the melodica. <laughs> yeah, so far I'm happy with them. The only other vendor that I've purchased from Japan is I Ishibashi, something like that, Ishibashi Music. And they always do like a really small box. It arrives here quickly, but these guys have a small box with the double box and all this bubble wrap. I'm really impressed with their pack job. But granted, this is a much more expensive guitar than I normally buy, or at least better be a case. Good. <laughs> I was getting worried. All right, here we go. I definitely would not hesitate buying from uh, TC Gaki again after what I've had here. It's one, two, three, four, is there a fifth? Yep. I think you guys are really gonna like this. I know I'm looking forward to it. A blank case. <laughs> the reveal. Huh? One, two, three. One, two, three. One? <laughs> this guitar has confused me for so long. But this listing finally named it properly, so I understand what the guitar is, and it's kind of a signature model of a guy in a roundabout way. So, yeah, I'm kind of going to tease you about this one, because I think this is going to be 
a, uh, a highly viewed review and demo because I don't think anybody's ever documented this version of the three pickup Black Beauty. It's a little bit crazy, but I am super happy I found one of these. Yeah, sure, that looks kind of fake, but that's just kind of a sign of the times. And for boxings today, we're going to start off with this one, the Lizzie Hale Explorer. I had this thing for seven months. I had to restore it back to original, and for whatever reason, I just wasn't super motivated to do this review, despite really liking the looks of this guitar. But I got an email from somebody who is actually friends with the band, you know, before they made it big. He's like, hey, if you ever reach out to them, if you use my name, you might be able to get like an interview with her. If I could ever get that to happen, you know, Lizzie Hale and her band and everything, they just show up around me next time that they're at a gig near Fort Wayne or something. I think it'd be cool to interview her about her upcoming Explorer. I don't know if it's official, but you can see Gibson posted a photo of a baritone explorer that has like this gold finish to it. Even if an interview never happens, I'm definitely gonna buy that thing when it's new because a baritone explorer, I love it. Moving on to the next one here. This one has a little bit of a stipulation that we have to do before we pack it up. It's the GK55. I had a great time learning about this model, that whole coil splitting feature with the spin-a-whirl thing. And I learned there were a few other manufacturers like PV with their, I think it was the T60, I think some of the comments were saying, and some of the other ones. And I've had one of those, and I must have been guilty of missing that. That was a long time ago, really, before I dove into all these things and looked at them. But yeah, I was threatening to part this guitar out if it didn't sell within three days. And here we are, I think this is the third day. And the reason why I said I was gonna part it out was simply because, you know, mystery headstock repair kind of going on. I added about $150 worth of vintage parts on here. And on top of that, I wanted this neck pickup for my SG exclusive before I did the review on that one to restore it to stock, because they're the same pickups in both models. So I found a buyer that's kind of the best of both worlds. He wanted the husk, he wanted all the parts, except for the pickups. So we get to go rip the pickups out, keep those so I can restore my SG, and he just has other pickups he wants to throw in here. So let's go ahead and do that. Moving on to our next unboxing. This one didn't take long to sell, maybe five hours after I posted the video. The Spirit 2. I had a great time learning about this, connecting all the pieces. I actually learned a little bit about Epiphone history doing this. I didn't know about the SG Specials being birthed the same way as the Spirits, so that was really cool. So I think I'll continue trying to find like the XPL version. I'm not too big on like the Kalered out ones, but I'm sure they're kind of cool in their own right as well. But yeah, definitely check out this video if you haven't. This one's just going up north to Michigan. That's all I have for this time. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.